let's take a look at the idea of sample spaces. So the definition we have here, a sample space often called S uh, of a random phenomenon, usually just some sort of uh, experiment that we're doing, is a set of all possible outcomes that cannot be broken down further into simpler components. So uh, we're gonna look at a couple examples of this. So the first one, suppose you toss two four-sided dice. Now, there are a few different things we could do with these, uh, these four-sided dice. So the very first thing, if we just see how many possible outcomes are there. So no, no, notice we didn't say add the numbers together, multiply them, do anything with them at all, just how many possible outcomes. Well, when we're dealing with something like that, we're basically saying, okay, I could have, um, you know, from die one and die two, Right? I could have a, a one and a one. I could have a one and a two. I could have a one and a three. Right? I could keep going and, and create this whole list that's very possible. It's fine if I, if I want to do that. Um, oftentimes, though, the, the case that we're looking at, it's going to have a lot of outcomes. Writing them all out is going to be a pain. Um, the other thing that we might you know, potentially get confused with as we're going through here, um, a one and a two is different from a two and a one, which is later on down our list. So right, you can think about these oftentimes as two different colored dice. So a red die and a green die, right? So one and two is gonna look different than two and one just based on the colors that you're seeing. So um, possible outcomes, the easiest way to do this is to say, okay, if we have two different events that we are doing, basically two things happening in, uh, you know, in two different steps, a multi-stage process, um, that we just take the number of ways we can do the first thing. So how many possible outcomes for the first die? Well, it's four-sided, so I guess there's just going to be four. And then how many outcomes for the second event or the second stage? And this is another four-sided die, so that's going to be four. And we just multiply these together. So we say four times four equals 16 possible outcomes. So that is the size of our sample space. The sample space itself is gonna be the collection of all of these combinations, one in one, one in two, one in three, et cetera. So all of those combinations together make the actual sample space, right? So it's the, the sample space is the set of all outcomes. We're here, we're just asked how many outcomes, basically how big is that sample space? Um, now in part B, we're saying how many possible sums are there? So now we actually are adding these together. So one of the ways to think about this is to think, okay, what is my smallest outcome and what is my largest outcome? And then we know that uh, with dice, especially with, with dice where the numbers are increasing by one at a time, we can get everything in between these. So the smallest thing that could happen is if both of the dice rolled a one, right? So a one and a one, we would have a sum of two. Now, because these are four-sided dice, and it's really important to keep track of how many sides your dice have, um, because these are four-sided, we say, okay, well, the largest possible outcome I could have is I roll both of them are fours. So four plus four, the largest sum I could have is eight. So keep in mind, just be careful. We might subtract these and go, oh, there's six possible sums. But remember, when we put these in a list, and because it's a shorter list, I can do that real quick. Right. If you actually put these in a list and you count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, huh, okay, we have seven outcomes. So just be careful um, when you're subtracting the smallest from the largest, you actually need one more than that. You need to account for um, right, that, the fact that our endpoints are inclusive. So we have seven outcomes here. So 16 outcomes if we're just saying what are the different combinations, but seven outcomes if we're looking at what are the possible sums. And the reason for the difference in these two, we have sums like uh, four, where this can be made a couple of different ways, right? We could have a one and a three, a two and a two, or a three and a one. So um, these sums can happen in multiple ways. If we wrote all of those out, we get back to the situation in part A. Okay. Um, and this general idea, I'll say, is, is called the counting principle in, in part A. I should have mentioned that a little bit earlier. So this is um, the counting principle, which we end up using quite a bit. Okay, so again, that's for multi-stage uh, processes. All right, now our second example here says we have a spinner numbered 1 through 12, 
and then uh, we have a coin that's going to be flipped simultaneously. So this sounds like a multi-stage event to me, right? Stage one, spin. Stage two, flip. They're happening simultaneously, sure, but they're, they're sort of separate events. They're not having any outcome uh, or any effect on each other's outcomes. So the number, uh, the number spun and heads or tails is recorded for the coin. So how many outcomes are in the sample space? Well, uh, again, we can use that counting principle and we can say, well, the first event has 12 possible outcomes, right? Spinning one through 12. And the second event is just heads or tails it has two possible outcomes. Since we are looking at recording both of these things, right? We spin a one and flip heads. We spin a one and flip tails. Spin a two heads, two tails, right? This whole thing. We don't want to have to go through writing out every possibility. So we, and we're just asked how many again. So not what is the sample space, just how many outcomes are there. Um, so 12 times two for our two events, and we get 24 outcomes. And that's the idea of sample spaces and the number of outcomes in those sample spaces.